are we doing, Steven? We're opening mail that we got from humans, presumably. <laughs> We have a little box from a Miss Liz in Texas. So in addition to the tape, there are a pair of dinosaurs holding the box closed. Avian dinosaurs. Oh. Miss Liz has not included a note, but has included some manner of ceratopsid. My initial idea is that this is supposed to be a protoceratops, but I'm gonna look at the belly. There's nothing written on the belly other than, oh, no, it just says made in China, which I already knew. The nasal horn is pretty pronounced, even though it's small, so I wonder whether it's supposed to be like a, I don't know, a centrosaurus or something more derived than a, than a protoceratops, but I, th I think it's probably supposed to be protoceratops. Just really low effort. So thank you, Miss Liz. Uh, we have a gift that, that I was given that I just wanted to um, demonstrate that you press the back and it does this. And it says try me, so I'm gonna pull the thing. Oh, the eyes light up! This one doesn't work anymore because I could I haven't replaced the battery in 20 years, but um, this this one, the eyes used to light up, and it has a speak it has a speaker hole in exactly the same spot as this one has speaker hole. Wow. I didn't do anything. Oh. Oh, that's they ripped off the Jurassic Park roar. That's what that sound was. That was pretty similar. This one used to go, ah, ah. Can we make that sound again? It went, ah, ah. <laughs> I used to do it a lot. I know what sound it made. I would demonstrate this to prove it, but I need to find a battery that fits it. Okay, apparently it just does that after a while, if you just leave it. So thank thank you, Bacht. Oh, for is this in like demo mode? Do I need to flip a switch? No, nothing. Turns out there's a reason they jammed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next we have an envelope with a, a dinosaur sealing it, which I appreciate. It's a theropod this time, a non-avian theropod sealing it. Whoa. Ah! There's a Chronosaurus sticker. Chronosaurus is such a good name for a genus. It's a, it's a marine reptile, which, which we haven't done on the show yet. Any marine reptiles, actually. But uh, this is portraying it as more like a sea monster crocodile. Which I guess, if I, would, if I was held down and forced to describe them, I, I guess that is what I would come up with. But. Oh, who's this from? This is from a Michelle in Pennsylvania. What? We, it says, um, primordial world. And there's a, what I assume is a Tyrannosaurus, some kind of Tyrannosaurid at least, uh, roaring at something off this way. Primordial world. 
Oh, there's a letter. Dear, your dinosaurs are wrong. I hope you're having a good day right now. Thank you. Your videos are very interesting on how you review dinosaur toys and how inaccurate, outdated they are. I honestly don't mind some inaccuracies on dinosaurs as long as they are done well. There's something called suspension of disbelief. Anyway, the picture I made you is a personal story I worked on called Primordial World, where it focuses on a male Tyrannosaurus Rex named Pat, named Peter Clayton. Oh, named Pater, Latin for father. Okay. Uh, trying to survive in a harsh and violent alternate timeline where dinosaurs never became extinct, but not too harsh and violent. Okay. Think of it as a more dark and mature version of the good dinosaur, except the characters say nothing. That would have improved that movie tremendously if they just, um, I don't know, Fantasia Rite of Springed it and the dinosaurs didn't talk. Uh, yeah, no dialogue, what a shock. I know this isn't a toy, but do you think you can look at the Chronosaurus sticker for a future video? Signed, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. I think, I don't know if we have a Chronosaurus toy, but as you will soon find out, stickers may be fair game in the future. Primordial world. That makes sense that you would say primordial if you're referring to post-Mesozoic, but pre-modern. Oh, there's a whole like treatment. Oh, she, um, she's included, like, uh, little reviews of, um, some other dinosaur media. <laughs> I've never heard of Dino Squad. <laughs> what, a, 2007 to 2008? Well, that would explain why. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> okay, we have... Shipped for a customer. Oh, they used our uh, banner art as, as a backdrop. I don't know if I'm allowed to reproduce that photo on the internet, but we'll, we'll find out. We can blur it. Okay, there's the dinosaur that's in the photo on the sheet. It's... It's definitely a toy. Oh. Okay, so their question is... Uh, this is from... This is from Harold and his family. Ah, so Harold and Alexander and family, okay. Uh, so they don't know if this is an Uranosaurus or a Spinosaurus. And their points of confusion are, which is on slide two, their points of confusion are the head shape, which is neither duck-billed nor a narrow snout. That's, that's true. It, it doesn't look like an Uranosaurus or a Spinosaurus head. Uh, there seem to be teeth, but the teeth aren't conical. Are they? Oh, yeah. Um... The forward limbs, yeah. The neural spines are, are dimetrodon-like. Uh, the, the sail shape, start and finish. I'm not sure what that means. Sail shape, start and finish. When it tapers in and out, probably. Ah, and the shapes of the feet, which are kind of amorphous, but I, I see what you mean. Yeah, based. I don't know, if I, was, if I was examining it in a vacuum, I might be like, this is a super inaccurate Aranosaurus, but I have definitely seen art of a quadrupedal Spinosaurus that predates the whole Ibrahim et al. 2014 thing. Uh, I think this is probably supposed to be Spinosaurus, as, as ludicrous as that might seem. Anyway, there's a correspondence, Elizabeth and Stephen. My son's obsession for dinosaurs has been enriched thanks to your show. Well, thank you. We're glad. Uh, we are so grateful. 
You're welcome. Uh, at five and a half, Alexander's paleontological tunnel vision needs more resources like your dinosaurs are wrong, not less. I agree. Uh, that's why we became patrons of the show. Again, thank you very much for becoming a patron. We, we, we could literally could not do it without support from, from patrons. The decision to join Patreon happened after a long debate over the small dinosaur figurine enclosed in this package. Uh, Alexander kept calling this model an Uranosaurus, and Harold said he was wrong, insisting that it is a crude Spinosaurus. Alexander then blew Harold's mind and started to explain all the reasons why it couldn't be a Spinosaurus, from the shape of its head, the front limbs of an Iguanodontia, yes he said this, the lack of claws to tear flesh, he also mentioned something about the sail that he didn't have the words to describe, but we eventually got to the bottom of that. I still wasn't sold, but saw a great opportunity to teach my son about using evidence and research to settle disagreements. Side by side, we compared the Wikipedia pages of each dinosaur, and the confusion over this toy only deepened. The sail attachment near the tail did not correspond to the Oranosaurus. The spines seemed to be pointed like a Dimetrodon, not wide. Oh, pointed like a Dimetrodon, not wide. Okay. Uh, the head was not shaped like an Oranosaurus, rather had the teeth of a carnivorous theropod. Uh, but this didn't land us nearer to a Spinosaurus. The snout wasn't at all cro crocodilian with conical teeth. The head shape was almost like a velociraptor. Uh, the discussion went on for about an hour. It was one of the most amazing conversations I've ever had with my eldest son. In the end, Alexander said, You know what, Papa? I think we're both wrong. This toy isn't made very well. I asked him, Do you think we should mail it to your dinosaurs are wrong and let Stephen tear it apart? You saw his eyes light up with excitement. We wrote, out the enclosed paperwork while Alexander held the dinosaur model, thinking about it being mailed to you. This little piece of plastic was charged with wonder and about to go on an epic journey. It may be going to Michigan, but for my son, it might as well be traveling to the moon. Thank you for being part of such a wonderful moment with my son. Uh, please soldier on with the shows. Best wishes. That was very heartwarming to experience. So I may have been a little flippant uh, about my diagnosis, but I stand by it. I think this is supposed to be a Spinosaurus. <laughs> that is an adorable story. But yes, I agree that settling disputes using evidence and um, internet searches is uh, uh, the right way to go instead of just arguing based on, uh, you know, portrayal in movies or other toys or, or whatever. So good instincts, Harold. I have been planning a follow-up to the Spinosaurus episode, so we should probably get on that, huh? So the last thing that we have today, uh, we actually got a while back, and I've been dragging my feet about talking about it, but... Um... Garrett and Sabrina of the I Know Dino podcast, which I assume if you watch this show, you've probably heard of this podcast, but if you haven't, go check it out. They, they upload way more regularly than we do. Um, and also, they're just um, good dinosaur content. Um, it says, thanks so much for doing a video about our logo, which is what we're about to do. Uh, also, congrats and good luck with the new channel. Garrett and I look forward to doing the video interview. Uh, enjoy the stickers. Uh, best from Sabrina. And the thank you card has a what I think is a Uoplocephalus and some kind of sauropod on it. I did I did do an interview with them. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. We, we did, I, I did an interview with them um, some time ago, but due to, um, well, the vagaries of getting production started here, I haven't been able to actually do our part of the deal, which was that I would talk about their logo. Until now! So the first thing that strikes me about the Tyrannosaurus here, and I, I assume I'm not wrong in, in calling that a Tyrannosaurus, is that the... Um, flesh on the head in places is pretty tight. Like, I don't think that the antorbital fenestra there would be quite so easily seen through the, through the face flesh. Um, and I'm not sure that the 
throat would be quite so tight against the bottom of the jaw. That, that seems like there's nowhere for food to actually travel from the bottom of the, from the bottom of the mouth down into the throat, but I could be wrong. The arms are pronated down, which we, as we, as we have repeatedly mentioned, um, many dinosaurs could not do, Tyrannosaurus included. Uh, their, their arm bones wouldn't allow them to take their hand and go Meh. The upper arm is oddly muscled. Like the, the, the forearms on Tyrannosaurus were quite muscular, uh, I believe we've mentioned before, but um, the, the shoulder of a theropod doesn't, doesn't closely resemble a human shoulder and upper arm, whereas this one seems to. The eyes, or at least the eye we see, is facing forward, which I like. Tyrannosaurus is famous for its binocular vision. Uh, the teeth have been simplified because it's a toy, so of course you, you're not going to have a huge number of very sharp spikes, but they're clearly heterodont. You've got the little scrapey teeth at the front and then the big spikes for breaking bones in the maxillae and so forth. As of 2001, we should probably want the nostril to be a little closer to the margin of the mouth. Uh, Whitmer had a paper talking about how the, um, the position of the actual fleshy nostril on animals is usually at the front margin of the naris on the skull, uh, not, not up high and slit-like the way that we see in movies, where, where this, I think this must be based on the Jurassic Park, if it is not itself a Jurassic Park. Uh, Tyrannosaurus toy. It's being pretty conservative with display structures on the head. Um, as of the Holiday 2019 paper, Holiday et al., um, we might expect there to be more fleshy structures or maybe some kind of carnuncular skin up on top of the, the frontoparietal region. I don't know why I gestured at my own skull since our skulls are not super similar. Uh, then again, we're seeing the animal from below, so maybe there are structures up there and we just don't see them. As far as facial integument goes, there's a 2017 paper on Displetosaurus that is informative. Um, a lot of what they concluded also applies to Tyrannosaurus, and they're, they're basically looking at the, the texture of the bone on Displetosaurus and trying to map that to particular um, fleshy structures. So we would indeed have a, uh, a keratin horn covering on the tip of the, the post orbital, but I don't know if it would actually form a continuous sort of angry eyebrow looking ridge out in front of the eye, but I, I suppose it's not unreasonable to have it that way. There is armored skin at the tip of the lacrimal, which is the bone in front of the eye, um, but it would probably be more like a big keratin boss, just just a, a sort of a lump uh, above and behind the eye is what that keratin would form as. Now what I mean by armored skin is an armor-like dermis. Uh, there's a, a couple of sources that you can read more about that in other animals, but the idea is that there are these uh, lobules, which, are, which is just a word for a small lobe of bone, uh, on the surface of the bone, and that forms because there are diagonally crisscrossing fibers in the flesh, and they ossify over time. They, they, they are replaced by bone at their bases. Now, conventionally, you see that kind of structure forming at the, the margins of um, horns or beaks uh, uh, or plates, but if you have it not forming a, a sort of ridge line or outline, if you have it sort of spread out over the surface of the bone, um, Whitmer and uh, Hieronymus and others uh, suggest that that is indication of armor-like dermis. So what's an armor-like dermis? Uh, that's a little unclear. Some living animals have it. Um, the authors reference parts of a hippopotamus's face or um, uh, rhinoceri, rhinoceroses, I think rhinoceri, have um, very thick armor-like dermis, uh, but the outward appearance of it 
is less clear. So it might just be um, some rather bumpier skin. It might have keratin horn plates or keratin scales. Uh, some kind of like shield would make sense. Um, the places that we see it are on the, the front and top of the snout, sort of along the ridge line. We find some on the chin. Um, we have some on the, on the lacrimal, as I just mentioned, and some on the tip of the hugel, hugel, jugel. I've only seen that word written, and I always want to say it with a with a H sound, but I think it's jugal. It must be jugal. The corner of the mouth. So basic. So you know how on like a trumpet case or, or other hard shell suitcases, you'll have um, metal or plastic corners to to reinforce the parts that take the most abuse. It's like that. The the. <laughs> the corners of Tyrannosaurus's face had extra armor on them, which we maybe could have predicted anyway, but it's nice to have those osteological correlates. The main point of the Displetosaurus paper was that the little holes, the foramina, in the skull would correspond to a crocodile-like integument, including um, crocodile-like integumentary sensory organs, which just means they had a pretty sensitive sense of touch in areas of the face, which makes sense because these animals are primarily using their head to interact with the world, using their mouth to manipulate objects or, or, or whatever else. Um, so you would need to have a, a pretty uh, uh, sophisticated sense of touch on your face. Now, other workers have looked at those foramina and said, hey, these kind of look like uh, the arrangement of foramina on a lizard's skull. And that together with the shape of the margin of the mouth um, suggest to those workers that um, these animals would have lips, much like a lizard, where instead of being pretty tightly bound to the gum line, like in a crocodile and like in this toy, um, the lip would extend a bit further, where you, even with the mouth open, you wouldn't necessarily see the entire tooth. And we'll have more to say about that in Velociraptor. So as a Silurosaur, as a Tyrannosaur, now that we have uh, animals like Dilong or Eutyranus, uh, we might expect there to be filamentous or even feathery uh, fluff on, on this animal. Uh, but as you may have heard, we have skin impressions from a Tyrannosaurus. Um, we've had skin impressions from related animals for some time, but they're patchy. And as we know from Kalinda Dromaeus, just because you have scales on one part of the animal doesn't necessarily mean that you could have that you couldn't have uh, uh, filaments somewhere else. The 2017 paper uh, describes very fine scales uh, at several points on the animal's body. They're they're a millimeter across, uh, which means that if you were trying to portray that kind of pavement on a toy this size, you wouldn't even see it. It would just be the surface of the plastic. Um, What's on this toy seems to be more in line with what we found on related animals, where it's larger geometric scales, which is fine, because if, you're go if your choice is have it completely smooth and no detail at all, or ha have larger geometric scales, I think have larger geometric scales is fair. That 2017 paper is fairly short, but draws pretty broad conclusions. Um, their main point is that Tyrannosauroids uh, were ancestrally feathered. But once you get to the Tyrannosaurids, uh, uh, which is the larger animals, they are all unfeathered because they became dramatically larger and moved into more open environments, which in living animals does seem to correlate with a, a loss of covering. Now, I've been saying for a while that with regards to Tyrannosaurus and feathers, we haven't found a Tyrannosaurus in conditions that would have preserved fluff. So if they had fluff, we just can't say. We don't, we don't have any information. Until the depositional environment of this specimen is described, that's still the case. And if you follow um, Dr. Cow's blog, Therapata, um, he points out that this whole thing might be a taphonomic artifact. Um, if the animal dried out before preservation, which seems to be the case, uh, whatever filaments it might have had 
might not have been present anymore and, and certainly would have been would not have been preserved. Um, he goes even further and he says that the the pebbly sort of wrinkly texture that you see on the preserved skin uh, might just be an artifact of how the creature dried out. So I cannot say that this this dinosaur in this sticker should have filaments, but nor can I yet say that it definitively should not. The 2017 authors, as well as a lot of people on the internet, seem to view this topic from a all feathers or no feathers standpoint, whereas we know that it could be some feathers and some scales. Uh, uh, so th there is nuance here, and it's not a simple feathers, yes or no, uh, sort of issue. <laughs> and it's green. I like that it's green. You've had... Uh, d Tyrannosaurus in general has been uh, moving towards more of a gray, brown, orange color palette, so it's good to see the classic Tyrannosaurus. I mean... This guy's a little more saturated, but same general idea. More yellowish belly, more greenish back. This one doesn't have glowing red eyes, but that that's probably for the best. So again, thank you, Garrett and Sabrina. I'm sorry it took us this long to actually get to your sticker, but uh, yeah, check out I Know Dino if you haven't yet. And thank you to everybody who sent stuff in. It will n probably never stop warming my heart that you all um, value our input on, on your, your toys. I don't know that that was an awe. It's very cute. Oh. So, thank <laughs> Is it done? Well, thank you for bearing with us for a somewhat protracted mailbag. And if you want to send... It's not done. If you'd like to send us a toy, uh, our address is in the description. Uh, we only ask that you tell us whether you need it back. And thank you for watching. <laughs>